Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Matthew chapter 5 verse 19, Lamentations chapter 3 verse 12, and Ruth chapter 4 verse 8. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Lord God, we know you are soon to come. We anticipate your arrival. We pray your arrival. We say, come Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Maranatha, Lord, amen. All right, you guys, Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. All right. And so this is um, speaking of uh, the the fact that we are not to slacken anything from the word of God. Right. It says, therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments. So that means that even if it's, you know, don't covet your neighbor's oxen. Right. This is important. Everything in the word of God is important. There is nothing that you should relax. Yes, there is a greatest commandment, which is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And then also the one that's like it to love your neighbor as yourself. But here he's saying that none of them should be relaxed, right? None of them in comparison to one another in teaching, we should teach all of them. We should, we should remind people of all of them. All right. And so therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same. So if you're going around telling other people, you know, um, you can do whatever you want to, it's all under grace, right? Doesn't that sound pretty familiar? Um, you, you can, you know, just, just anything that relaxes or teaches others to relax because it, it helps you feel better right that you can you can do anything and kind of come under this great no uh-uh you shouldn't teach that and you shouldn't teach other people that that's the truth because that is not abiding in Christ right and so um we need to make sure that as we teach the word of God we teach it wholeheartedly in its context we teach it with um with the 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 understanding that all of it is important right all of it is important and all of it is truth, right? And there's nothing that's more important one than the other as it relates to its need to be taught, right? And so it says, uh, or teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever does them, does them. So that means that actively acting out the word of God in your life, right? I should see your life and it should be a reflection of Christ. I should look at you and be able to tell, hmm, there's something different about that one. There's something that stands out about that one. That one's work ethic is different. That one, that one talks different. That one walks a little different. That one treats others a little different, right? I, I should see the commandments as a part of your life right? When others are gossiping, I should see the commandments in you. I should see the law in you. I should see Holy Spirit guiding your tongue, right? I should see all of that as a reflection of who you are. It says, but whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So not just doing, but telling other people to do, right? Not just doing, but showing other people, discipling others and letting them know this is the way of life, right? This is the way of eternal life, Christ Jesus, right? And so you're teaching them. It says, teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven, Hallelujah. So, so you will be called great 
in the kingdom of heaven. Now that's great, right? That's great. God has riches and rewards and, and to be called great in the kingdom of heaven, right? We're not talking about around the corner at this place or that place. We're talking about in the kingdom of heaven heaven god's kingdom right this new new earth this this beautiful heavenly place where we will have eternal life this is that is the kingdom of heaven and you're going to be called great there wow why because you've done as well as taught the commandments and not relax them you have taught the ways of God. You have let other people know you have discipled. Amen. All right. And so that differentiates people, right? So you can see Christians who don't do that, right? You can see Christians who are not living that type of a lifestyle, right? You should not judge them. You should not judge them. Just because you can see the sin doesn't mean you get to judge that person. You still love that person and you are led by Holy Spirit to do whatever it is Holy Spirit is telling you to do as it relates to that person. But the important thing right here is that you know there is a differentiation, right? There's a group that's going to be called the least and then there's a group that's going to be called the greatest right and and so you know we know that according to the book of revelation um repentance is necessary um um getting your heart right with god is necessary um um not not getting your lamp stand taken down is is something that is it can be an issue, right? You need to search and allow Holy Spirit to search your heart and surrender your total heart to God and let him be your first love, right? You don't need to compromise like the Nicolaitans. So these are things that differentiate greatest from least, right? And so here at Lamentations chapter three, verse 12, he bent his bow and set me as a target for his arrow. All right. And so this is in Lamentations. So we know that most likely it was written possibly by Jeremiah. And, you know, um, during that time when the people were under such great pressure, such great tribulation, you know, they felt like God was the one doing this, right? It wasn't just that it was the enemy. It wasn't just Babylon. It wasn't just Edom. It was God was allowing this to happen. And so this represents a person who is in tribulation. And the fact that they know God enough to know that they should call upon him, right? And cry out to him, even though they feel as if he's not answering. And, and you know, just the fact that they know this thing, it, it shows that they're a part of a chasing group, right? So this is showing that there's, there uh, is a possibility of being a least, right? A, a, a lesser, right? And so we know that according to the book of Revelation, you know, some people won't be able to be raptured. Some people will face the test. They will face the trial um, that is coming upon the earth. And so, you know, they are going to have a feeling of separation. They are going to have a feeling of, of being a part of, of something that is meant for the enemy, right? That is meant for the devil and his people right? They're going to have a, a feeling of being the target of the bow, right? And so this actually, it says he bent his bow and set me as a target for his arrow. All right. And so when you're saying this, you're saying that this is a moment before the release, right? And so there are targets, right? That are going to, to be made, right? And when, when there's a separation that is coming, um, a, a, a qualification of, of those who have not abided in Christ and followed Holy Spirit and those who have, um, then there's necessarily going to be a, an enemy 
to aim at, right? A, a group of persons who, who have not accepted the love of God, right? And so they are going to have this sensation of being the enemy, right? They are going to have the sensation of, of being um, attacked and encroached upon and this allowed to happen by God, but there is even hope in that, right? There is some hope. If we read Lamentations chapter three, there is hope in waiting on God. Yes, it's gonna feel as if it, it there is no hope, right? But there is hope waiting on the Lord. God will eventually relent. God will eventually turn his heart to those who are sincerely crying out to him. But here in this moment before for the release of the arrow, um, there is great distress. There's a great sensation of hunting. There's a great sensation of, of being um, a part of a group of persons who have not abided in Christ. Um, and for these people, those who have not abided with God, right? go and read all of Lamentations 3. It's a very long chapter, but it gives you a, a great understanding of what tribulation will be like for people and, and the distress that is coming upon those who should have abided but did not. Um, and as well as those who, who did not realize that um, Jesus was Lord, they're, they're going to go through a great distress. All right, Ruth chapter four, verse eight. So when the Redeemer said to Boaz, buy it for yourself, he drew off his sandal. So with this greater and lesser class the, in, in heaven, right? Um, you have these, these people who will be redeemed, right? You have these people who, who will um, be in heaven and be blessed. And guess what? When Jesus gets the go ahead, hallelujah, he's going to come and he's going to come quickly. It says he's coming quickly, right? And so, so we have to be ready and you don't want to be a part of the lesser class, right? You want to be a part of the greater class, those who are called great in the kingdom of heaven. You don't just want to make it in. You want to be somebody, right? <laughs> Say, I want to be somebody, right? Uh, we want to be a part of the group who is called greater, a part of the group who has not relaxed um, the, the, the word of God, a, a part of the group who, who was doers of the word of God and teachers of the word of God, right? Who displayed the word on display in their life. And so, you know, there's going to be a group that is a part of the arrow, right? A part of the attacked. And there's also going to be a part of, of those who are blessed. And guess what? Their blessing and their qualification of, of status is going to come quickly, right? It says, so when the Redeemer said to Boaz, buy it for yourself, he drew off his sandal right? God is always waiting. He's waiting for that relationship. He's waiting for you to come to him. When the, the first redeemer speaks, it is as if the law is letting us know, hey, I'm, I can't redeem you, right? The law can't redeem you. It's not your adherence to the law per se in the sense of, oh, I have to do all the rules. No, it's can you listen for Holy Spirit? And as Holy Spirit tells you to do this thing, that thing, if, if the Holy Spirit is in you and you know your word, you can vet what, what he's saying with the word. It's going to align with the word, right? And so it says, so when the Redeemer said to Boaz, buy it for yourself, he drew off his sandal. So Jesus did it quickly. Why? Because Jesus was the true redeemer. He was the one that, yes, came second, but he was the one who could redeem. He was the one who could cover. He was the one who could fulfill all of the law, not leaving an iota or a dot unturned right? He made sure all of the law was fulfilled, right? He is the epitome of the law and the prophets. He is the, he is the fulfillment, right? And so when he 
came to redeem us right here in in the reflection with Boaz it says that the first redeemer says buy it for yourself he drew off his hand he it was all about the do right it was all about it was all about the action right he didn't sit on it and wait he drew off his sandal. That means that he signed the contract. That means that he he put he, he got that pen and he he signed on the dotted line, right? According to how we would do it, right? He he wasn't afraid. He didn't hesitate to redeem you. You need a redeemer like that, one who can truly cover you. And remember, the law cannot cover you. Only relationship with Christ can cover you, receiving him as your personal Lord and Savior, right? And so that way you are righteous, right? That way you can be a doer of the word and know what part to do and what takes precedence, right? By listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, right? And so when you do that, when you develop relationship, when you walk with the Father, right? When you, when you realize, hey, this law can't redeem me. I need something. I need a redeemer. You need Christ, right? And Christ is the one who's going to, through his Holy Spirit, lead you and guide you into all truth. He's going to show you the way, but you're going to have to listen to him. You're going to have to, to do as well as teach others. That's, that's how you're going to be great in the kingdom of heaven, right? And so, and also, you know, we just need to make sure that we're not a part of that group who are set as the bow, right? Set as the um, target of the arrow, right? And so, you know, if you look at the actions of the people of Israel during that time, you know, they were doing lots of stuff, right? They were doing lots of evil they were cruel to their own children. They were worshiping idols. They were making alliances with people who would not save them, right? And so, you know, they were relaxing the law in ways worse than the foreigners, right? So whereas the foreigners didn't have a law, their conduct in, in many ways was better than those who did have the law, right? And so the word lets us know, hey, that ain't right. God sees that and he is not pleased with that. And so, you know, we need relationship. Jesus didn't hesitate for us. And so we need to make sure that we are doers for him because he did, right? He was a doer. He drew off that sandal. He did not hesitate. We need to be doers as well, as well as teachers of the word of God, amen, and not relax that, Make sure that we're teaching the whole word of God. Make sure we're discipling others. And, and God is going to allow us to be called great in the kingdom of heaven for it. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for being such a wise and loving teacher. We appreciate you. We praise you. We ask you to forgive us for all of our sins and help us to walk uprightly in your path. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Lord, let us be doers. Let us be doers and teachers in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys. Take care and be blessed.